in conclusion. As believers, as people who have been reborn, born of the Spirit, and are now members of Christ's family, we have no need to fear. We have no need to worry. We have no need to be concerned about our standing in Christ. We have no need to worry about a revolving door of salvation. We don't worry if we're saved or not because we know we're saved. We don't worry about the Sabbath as a seal because the Holy Spirit in the believer is what seals us for our down payment for heaven. Eternal life is not some kind of gift we receive after we die. It's something that we have the moment we believe. We always have an intercessor. We've entered into a new covenant. We've entered into the rest of God. And we live our lives day to day fully trusting that He will provide anything that we would need in accordance to His will. And since He bought us at a price, we are no longer our own. We are God's tool to share the gospel with others. When we get up in the morning, we need to put on the armor of God found in Ephesians 6. And we need to go out there in full trust of the Lord. Believe me, there is a spiritual battle going on around us every single moment of every single day. It is important that you put on the armor of God every morning. It's important that you remember that you are in Christ and Christ is in you. And if Christ is for us, then who can be against us? You now in these end days that we're in, these end times, or just crazy stuff's going on around the world. Uh, flash mobs that are hurting people. Money problems around the globe. Riots everywhere. Palestine looking to become a recognized state in the United Nations. All these things are building up to a conclusion. But it's not a conclusion that we as Christians have to worry about. But I want to talk to my Adventist friends for a moment. To my Adventist friends, I love you very, very much. And it pains me to see you so blinded to the truth. I so long to be able to say that you're truly my brothers and sisters in Christ. I plead with you to not fail to enter the promise rests because of unbelief. Today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day you can enter that final rest, the rest of God. Read Hebrews 3 and Hebrews 4. Don't be like the Israelites who 
who looked in to, to the promised land and said, Oh, we're like grasshoppers. You may be, but God it isn't. God is more than capable. God came down and died on the cross for you. And you are still worshipping on a day rather than worshipping the Savior who created that day, who cast the shadow of that day back through time. The person who is prefigured by every single element of the tabernacle. The person that makes the ironic priesthood null and void. Because he is a priest by the order of Melchizedek. A priest forever. Who sacrificed once and for all, took away all sins. Don't deny so great a salvation. It's not about you. It's about you waking up to the fact that you're dead in your sins. And you need to be born again. You can do nothing, nothing, to bring about your salvation. All of your good works are like nothing. All that you have to do, according to the Bible, is to realize that God has joined you to Himself, joined you to the Son, and you need to wake up from your spiritual death and realize the only way I can be saved is if I throw myself entirely at the foot of the cross and give Christ my life, all of it, period. And then you will be born again. And you will never have to worry about your salvation. You will never have to doubt about your salvation. You will always have an intercessor. But unless you realize that you truly have a spirit that's inside you that is born dead in sin, until you realize that truth of the Bible, that your spirit needs to be reborn, then you will never be saved. Never be saved. Body plus a piece of God's eternal spirit in you equals a living soul. Remain in God's image. God doesn't have a body. God is spirit. Put a little bit of a spirit in you. Because of Adam's sin, you're born with that spirit dead and aligned with sin, aligned with Satan. That's not until you realize that and you accept Christ's sacrifice on the cross that what happens in Colossians 1 happens. And what happens in Colossians 1 is the biggest miracle of all. What happens in Colossians 1 is nothing short of amazing. Let's see. It says in <clears throat> Colossians chapter 1 Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by God's will, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints in Christ at Colossae, who are faithful brothers. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God the Father our Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all the saints because of the hope reserved for you in heaven. You have already heard about this hope in the message of truth, 
the gospel that has come to you. It is bearing fruit and growing all over the world, just as it has among you since the day you heard it and recognized God's grace in the truth. You learn this from Epaphras, our dearly, beloved, dearly loved fellow. He is fellow slave. He is faith, a faithful servant of the Messiah on your behalf, and he has told us about your love in the Spirit. For this reason also, since the day we heard this, we haven't stopped praying for you. We are asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will, and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, so that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and growing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the saints' inheritance in the light. He has rescued you from the domain of darkness and transferred you, transferred us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. We have redemption, the forgiveness of sins in him. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For everything was created by him in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and by him all things hold together. He is the, also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. So that he might come to have first place in everything. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. And through him to reconcile everything to himself. By making peace through the blood of the, his cross. Whether things on earth or things in heaven. Once you were alienated and hostile in your minds because of your evil actions, but now he has reconciled you by his physical body through his death to present you holy, faultless, and blameless before him, if indeed you may gra remain grounded and steadfast in the faith and are not shifted away from the hope of the gospel that you heard. Paul is saying that the moment you believe, the moment you wake up from your sin and you believe, then your spirit is reborn because the Holy Spirit comes into you, fills you and seals you. You are transferred immediately with no probationary period from the kingdom of darkness, domain of darkness to the kingdom of the sun. And you're always there. You are always there. It's as simple as that. By grace, through faith, there's nothing you can do except wake up and accept the gift by grace, through faith. Call on His name and be saved. And enter that rest. Now is the time. Don't need to be scared of this. You won't even be here for it. You won't even be here for it. I want to thank you for joining me for this special <laughs> four-part episode of Midnight Musings. It's now 4.02 in the morning. God bless you guys. It's been a pleasure sharing the word with you. I hope that you find God. I hope you find freedom in Christ. God bless.